did this question at some point in our lives. Usually when we are up late, staring up at the ceiling or up at the stars, and we think to ourselves, is there something more to this life? Well, today I'm here to say yes. Yes, there is life after death. Good morning. I am Jeremy Nupp, a second semester student here at HCC, and as vice president of the Crew Christian Club here on campus, today I'm going to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, everyone has heard of the name Jesus, and according to Pew Research Center, about one-third of the world identifies as Christian. But what does the word gospel even mean? Well, according to the Bible Project, the word gospel comes from a Greek word, euangelion, which literally means good news. So what is the good news, you ask? Well, let's break it down into three parts. Why, how, and what now? First, we have to look at why. Why do we even need a savior? Well, it's essential we understand one of the many attributes of God, and that is justice. God is perfectly just, and he does not allow any sin to go unpunished. And according to the Bible, we all have an appointment with God after we die, a judgment day where all our evil thoughts and sins will be brought out into the light. And we are without excuse because God has given us a consciousness, but we still choose to go our own ways. We will always try to justify ourselves and say that we are not as bad as other people, but we've all fallen short of God's glory. And Jesus emphasizes this perfect law by saying things like, whoever looks with lust has already committed adultery in their heart, and whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And we all fall short of the glory, and the wages of sin is death. But here comes the good news of the gospel. How are we saved? It says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The good news is that Jesus took the punishment that we deserve for our sins upon himself on the cross. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life and was God manifest in the flesh. Jesus is our substitute. Jesus' final words on the cross were, it is finished, which literally means paid in full in Greek. Jesus fulfilled the law on our behalf because we could not do it out of our own merit. Now, this is what, now it's essential to understand that this is a gift of God and it is not a matter of our works or our good deeds or balancing the scale. And this is what sets Christianity apart from everything else. It's that we believe that eternal life is a gift from God and that we can't work our way out of it because good deeds don't cover the sin and they don't allow there to be justice for that. And it's um, important to understand that Jesus is the only one that could fulfill this law because he suffered and he took all of our sins and all the wrath all at once on the cross and then rose three days later displaying that there is life after death and that he has dominion over death. And this is just a perfect demonstration of love that even though we were still sinners, even though we still went our own ways, Christ died for us. And there's no greater love than to lay one's life down for his friends. Now, what now, you may be asking? We have to first understand the, the seriousness of our sin and our, our situation, and then change our mind about it and turn to Jesus because he is the one that's pure and spotless. And the minute we do that and put our trust alone in Jesus Christ, God promises us that we will be made clean as if we did all that Jesus did. Instead of God looking at us, he'll look at Jesus and he'll look at the cross and he'll see as if we were the ones that fulfilled that law, as if we were the ones that did all that work and took the cross. And this is made clear in a passage in the Bible and according to the Bible there was a thief on the cross next to Jesus Jesus was crucified next to two people and one of those people was mocking him and then the other one then these were both criminals rebuked him and told him that we are suffering justly and we deserve to die and then after that he turns to Jesus and he says Jesus remember me when you come into my kingdom and Jesus says to him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And that reemphasizes the simplicity of the gospel, that if we simply confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that he has control of our lives and surrender to him and believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead, then we will be saved. And in an instant, God will blot all of our sins away and we'll be free and made free in Jesus. Now, this is not an easy feat, for sure, 
because we have to realize that we can't really do it on our own. And we all want to be God in our own lives. We all want to have control. But we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow after him. Now, you probably still have a lot of questions. And so I just wanted to invite you all to an outreach event that we will be doing on the first Tuesday of March out in the Galleria. Uh, simply ask any question about God, spirituality, Jesus, or the Bible, and you can receive a free donut. And I all just want to leave you with words from Jesus. He says, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? Thank you very much.